Well, the way in which ASADA came about uh, was as a result of uh, a doping scandal that took place in cycling um, in respect of, the, uh, I think, the Australian Institute of Sport. Uh, and there was a, an inquiry commission that was conducted by Sir Robert Anderson QC, or Robert Anderson QC, and he gave a report uh, in 2004. And I'd just like to read out part of what he said um, because it became the basis uh, of the creation of then of ASDA, which then became ASADA. He said, I am, however, strongly of the view that there should be a body which is quite independent of the Australian Institute of Sport and of the Australian Sports Commission and of the sporting bodies themselves, with the power and duty to investigate suspected infractions such as substance abuse and to carry the prosecution of persons against whom evidence is obtained. There are a number of reasons why these functions should be performed by an arm's length body separately from and independently of the sporting bodies in the Australian Sports Commission. Now, that's not what took place in the Essendon case. So what you have is Anderson saying, there's a problem about sporting organisations conducting these sorts of inquiries, so you should have an independent body. Whereas what took place in the Essendon saga was a joint investigation involving, the, uh, involving ASADA and the AFL. And the reason for that, and it became clear in terms of the federal court proceedings, was because ASADA didn't have coercive powers, the powers to compel someone to answer questions. But the sporting body in this case, the AFL, did. So they piggybacked on the AFL. But when ASADA was set up, it was set up to carry out investigations independently. Uh, and because of the nature of the investigations that they would be carrying out, that is anti-doping investigations, and because those, inve because those allegations are serious, can be uh, something that uh, the press is interested in, um, there are a whole lot of confidentiality provisions in the ASADA legislation to protect the confidentiality of the person who's being investigated because until ASADA investigates and comes to a view as to whether a show cause letter should issue, they're just allegations, so there's confidentiality protection. But what occurred and what the courts found, what we argued before the federal court was, you couldn't effectively have ASADA and the AFL in the same room because under the ASADA legislation, the CEO had to make a decision about the provision of information and if you're sitting in the same room as the sporting body when questions are being asked and people are disclosing information, the CEO is not thinking about should I or shouldn't I disclose. That disclosure is occurring simultaneously. What the court said was, well, when you sit in the same room uh, and you're asked a question, the disclosure you're making is to the sporting body, not to ASADA. So the confidentiality provisions in the ASADA legislation have no application. So what you had in the Essendon situation was a body that had statutory confidentiality obligations, ASADA, sitting in the same room as the AFL, who didn't have to provide any confidentiality and in fact refused to provide any confidentiality obligations, where you're being asked questions by ASADA, but according to the court, you're disclosing to the AFL. Therefore, the confidentiality provisions don't apply. So you might as well take a big pen, take a pen and run a big red line through all those confidentiality provisions in ASADA because they're useless. And what occurred in the Essendon uh, case was you read about it in the press every day. And of course you read about it in the press every day because things were being disclosed to a body that didn't provide confidentiality obligations and despite what I'm sure will have been and will continue to be their strenuous denials, uh, things leaked to the press constantly and you read about it. So what you were having was trial by the press. You were being tried, convicted and executed by the press before the investigation ever came to any sort of conclusion. Um, exactly what Anderson said you should try and avoid exactly what, when ASADA was created, was not intended. So when the ASADA legislation was introduced in 2005, Kevin Andrews said, the establishment of ASADA 
will mean that sports, athletes and the public can have complete confidence that doping allegations will be investigated and pursued in an independent, robust and transparent way. So just if I can just go back to the establishment of ASADA will mean sports, athletes and the public can have complete confidence. That suggests that ASADA would carry out their investigations independently. Not in the same room with a sporting body that might have a view as to how they want things to turn out or might want to manipulate how these investigations occur. Everything about the way in which the matter was investigated was contrary to the whole basis of why ASADA was created. Uh, but unfortunately, the federal court, both at first instance and on appeal, relying on regulations that talked about the need for cooperation between a sporting body and ASADA meant that apparently you could sit in the same room, you could just effectively sidestep all the protections in the statute and effectively have to spill your guts to a body uh, that uh, after you did so, you generally read about in the press uh, in the following days. 